안녕하세요. My name is Bob Ejidami, and I'm uh, really excited to be here. Uh, today, I want to talk about um, something that's really exciting to us at INX, which is a brand new product that we're bringing to, to market with a, uh, a strong partner of ours. Um, and, uh, and something we think is quite a breakthrough for investors around the world when it comes to equities that are listed in stock exchanges. Um, as I said, Bob Ejodame, I'm the Vice President of Capital Markets at INX. I am responsible for relationships, partnerships, and business development. Um, that is my LinkedIn on the QR code. And that picture was taken last year at the first ever STO Summit. Um, and I want to congratulate the eDaily team and uh, the organizers and Flip for doing a great job of bringing such an event to Korea. Um, last year, the event was at the eDaily offices. This year, it's at the KRX. Maybe next year, it will be at the FSC, where we uh, celebrate some breakthrough on, uh, on regulation. Um, so real quick, about INX. We are a, uh, a, we're a regulated and a licensed broker dealer in the United States. Um, we are also a trading venue for security tokens. We're a licensed transfer agent, so we manage cap table and reg we provide reg uh, cap table services. And we're also a licensed crypto exchange in the United States. These are um, extremely valuable licenses that allow us to push digital asset uh, innovation in the financial markets. And so um, we, we recognize that we occupy quite a, an important uh, leadership position. And so I want to talk about some of the products that, uh, the product that, I, that we've just brought to market. So, when we look at stock markets and we look at um, you know, owning shares, a lot of times people look at shares as a, you know, almost a speculative uh, investment, something that can go up and, and hopefully won't go down. But at the heart of it, uh, shares are ownership in a company. It's very meaningful. Regardless of how many shares I own, uh, I'm an owner of that business, of that company. So what we're looking at is how to make more and more people around the world have easy access to ownership in, in shares, in companies. Um, I want to share a couple of statistics just to kind of build the, the, the narrative here. So when we look at stock market capitalization by country, and this is globally, um, the U.S. is clearly by far the, the leading location for, for stocks uh, to be listed on the, on the exchanges over there. Um, but when we look at the list, it is predominantly the mature economies, the Western economies, and more recently we're starting to see some of the large emerging markets join the, the party. When we look at the most valuable companies in the world, and forgive me, this chart might be a little bit outdated because the top, the top three keep, keep jostling for, uh, for the leadership position. But the message I want to bring across here is just how many of the most valuable companies have chosen to list uh, in the United States, either because they are United States companies or because they see that as the, uh, the most valuable location to be, to be listed. When we look at Europe, we see quite an exciting uh, choice of powerful global brands that we could own shares in, that we could buy shares in, uh, whether it's luxury goods or pharmaceutical companies, service companies, uh, and so on we have quite a choice of highly valuable companies that we could become owners of by buying their shares. 
I want to focus on a slightly different market, which is India, which is now in one of those top uh, top ten com uh, countries for for uh, stock market high stock market capitalization, market cap, and you know the average person might not recognize many of these brands, although some of them are becoming more and more important. Um, but I want to talk about one of them in particular, which is Bajaj. Bajaj is the maker of motorcycles, um, motorcycles that have proliferated many emerging economies, specifically in Africa, where uh, someone like the gentleman on, on that motorcycle, which is providing him with source of income, a vehicle for his family, um, might have a, quite a strong affinity to this brand, Bajaj, and might actually have an understanding of the value uh, of owning the shares of a company like that. So there's companies in every market that are providing meaningful services and solutions and products to people in all walks of life. And how do you uh, get these people to be able to own shares in those companies? Investor demographics are changing. Um, over the last decades, we see uh, uh, some really interesting uh, developments. For example, the demographic is changing in the age group. So younger and younger people, more and more young people are investing in, uh, in stock markets. We see a 3x increase in under 40s in the United States investing over the last decade. Um, we know that the security market size is only going to increase. We're looking at a compounded annual growth rate of you know, well over 9%. And interestingly, 40% or so of that growth in global market capitalization is going to come out of Asia Pacific. Um, we know that ETFs, exchange traded funds, are a very popular way of investing and de-risking your investments, and there is a huge growth in, uh, in ETFs. Um, and I think most noteworthy when we talk about ETFs are the crypto, the Bitcoin, and the Ethereum um, ETFs that have just recently been approved in the United States and in some other countries as well. So how is the space evolving, and what other changes can we expect to see in the space um, when we look at emerging markets, so if we think back to that gentleman on, on the motorcycle, there are certain challenges that they face when it comes to you know, being able to invest in stock markets. Education, financial literacy, um, market data could be difficult for these guys to access. The fact that in those countries they might not have access to fractionalized investing, and if you think that a Berkshire Hathaway uh, Class B stock costs $450, that could be a whole annual salary for someone. It's, it's impossible for them to buy shares like that. Um, if you're looking to trade on the NASDAQ, then you have to be awake during the NASDAQ trading hours. And if you're in Asia, then that means pulling night shifts. Um, things like clearing and settlement and all the infrastructure that is that supports financial markets and investing in stocks are not common in many of these countries as well. And therefore, the few brokers that exist and are providing these services naturally will be expensive. Um, now, there are fintech platforms that are bringing investing into the mobile phone and making things more accessible, but they are still emerging. Let's take Nigeria as an example. Uh, I just wanted to share, these are four investment applications that are available to Nigerians today. And if we look at the numbers of downloads, you know, a million, a hundred thousand, that's two, two or so million on these apps, it shows that there is appetite. There is appetite for people in these emerging economies to invest in shares in their countries but also, as we see in the, in the example on the bottom right, to buy shares that are listed on the NASDAQ. 
And so what you'll have is a broker dealer in Nigeria will have a partnership with a broker in, in the US and they will facilitate the, uh, the share trading that way. But again, what is the cost to those investors and how accessible um, are the, uh, uh, the, the ways to fund your account and the ways to participate in the financial markets using these newer methods? So at INX, we started looking at how to, um, how to address this, this need for um, people in these economies to access the stock markets. INX is a digital first uh, uh, platform. As I said at the start, we're a cryptocurrency exchange, we're a security token uh, uh, offering platform and, and so on. And our clients are very much crypto natives. So we, f we figured out a way to provide these crypto natives with access to the markets. But first of all, let's look at the crypto natives. When you look at these these articles, there is a pattern here. Some of the most noteworthy statistics when it comes to crypto adoption come from emerging markets, from places like you know, Pakistan and Nigeria and Argentina, as we know, with their challenges with the peso and the, uh, the devaluation there. Turkey has uh, seen a lot of its lira lose in, in value over the last few years. If we think back to Axie Infinity, the play-to-earn game that took the Philippines by storm, it is clear that people in these countries can be very crypto savvy, very crypto native, and are looking at ways to shift their net worth onto US dollar rails, for example, by acquiring stable coins. This is a chart from Chainalysis, which pretty much summarizes what I've just said, which is that in the top 20 countries for crypto adoption, it's exactly those countries where the capitalization of the stock market is still very low. It's these countries that if they want to own shares that are listed and traded on NASDAQ, they will start to face those same challenges that I described a while ago. This is a chart of the countries where INX accepts investors from. And it, it's clear that we are able to provide a meaningful access for people in those same countries that have the challenges to the financial markets. So how did we do it? So the first thing was, as I said, we are a marketplace, right? We are a platform where you can raise capital on a security token offering. You can trade security tokens on our platform and so on. So we needed an issuer of tokenized equities. And so we found, we identified uh, a very strong partner, uh, BACT. And we, in a, in a pilot, we tokenized NVIDIA shares. And I'll talk a little bit about how we did that. So first of all, we are regulated we are very much uh, uh, adherent to US regulations, and so we had to find someone else who was similarly uh, licensed and regulated, and in this case, it was backed out of Europe. And as we can see on the regulatory status over here, this is an asset, or this is a, a company that is creating securities under EU regulations. These securities are compliant with various EU regulations, including the prospectus law. Um, so in the case of NVIDIA, tokenized NVIDIA, you're looking at a fully mature um, security under EU regulations. Um, you have all of the requirements that accompany such a security, whether it's key information documents, final terms, fact sheets, disclaimers, and so on. They are all um, made available to investors. And in fact, even more detail is available, for example, the way these shares are custodied. If you think back to four or five years ago, Binance and FTX had started offering you know, shares of various uh, blue chip companies on their platforms. But those were not shares backed by any assets. They were simply 
uh, uh, algorithmically tracking the price of the shares at the exchanges. Those were illegal securities. This is the exact opposite. This is actual shares are being acquired and being custodied at a bank, and then tokens are created on a one-to-one -one basis. When we think about the maturity of the RWA space and, and tokenized equities, here is a great example of a rating agency, an independent rating agency uh, out of Germany, took a look at the, NVIDIA, at the tokenized NVIDIA uh, security, and they assigned it a, an AA rating based on the same criteria that is used to rate you know, regular traditional stocks. In fact, the NVIDIA tokens were rated A when they were issued by, by BACT, and when they were listed on INX, because that increased the liquidity of the asset uh, and other factors, it was upgraded to a double A rating. So this is a really high quality instrument. So the bottom line is what we've achieved here is it's a marriage of US regulations and European regulations um, wrapping one of the most exciting stocks and exciting companies in the world into a token, making that token accessible to digital natives, uh, millions of whom are living in specifically those countries that have challenges to access NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange and to access those shares. And we've worked with a very strong partner to bring a product to the market where with the right education and with the right marketing and outreach, we can start to support people like the gentleman on that motorcycle with the ability to start investing and building a retirement portfolio uh, with as little as 10, 20, 30 dollars a month. This is very meaningful to people in those countries. So when we look at this future for tokenized um, uh, in investment products like the NVIDIA shares. What are the real breakthroughs here? It's 24 seven trading and settlement. So people in Pakistan or in Nigeria or in Kenya or in Argentina, at any time of their choosing, can go on the INX platform and they can buy shares of NVIDIA. And in a few weeks, we're going to actually be listing even more um, tokenized equities, blue chip equities, uh, ETFs and so on. We're going to start working on bringing more and more of these very exciting brands and companies to those, to those people. Um, as I said, crypto is a part of our DNA. We are a licensed crypto exchange, so we are able to support these investors in using their Ethereum or USDC or whatever stablecoin they have to unramp onto the platform. So that's a, another way of reducing the, 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 the hurdles, the headaches of funding their accounts. Self-custody. So imagine being able to hold your NVIDIA or Tesla shares in your own wallet and um, potentially use that as collateral to borrow uh, fiat, to borrow USDC from a protocol. Um, dividends via stable coins, again, the ability to have dividends paid directly into your digital wallet um, and, again, access all these types of investments that I've mentioned, whether it's ETFs, whether it's tokenized treasuries, um, commodities, private credit, and so on. So this is the future that we, we see for a lot of investors in those uh, economies. And with the right partnerships and with the right licensing, we've been able to, um, to achieve that. And I, as, I, as I showed on that slide at the start, where 40% of the growth in global market cap is expected to come out of Asia Pacific. So we would be very excited to make more and more of these shares and these stocks and these companies, uh, specifically out of Asia Pacific, we would be very excited to make those accessible to people in, in all these countries around the world. 
So I want to thank you all for uh, listening to my, uh, to, my, to my speech. And uh, I hope that you'll find some, uh, some benefit. And uh, if anyone would like to explore any kinds of collaborations or understand a little bit more about what we've done, I'm, uh, I'm available over the next few days. This is my LinkedIn, as I said. It would be my absolute pleasure to, to work with you guys. Come, Sam, you